Hey guys, today I'm going to discuss about anti-diabetic hormone. It is also called vasopressin. Vaso means which is uh, related to blood vessels and pressin means to squeeze something. So it is a vasoconstrictor hormone. Let's see where the ADH comes from. Here, this is hypothalamus and just beneath the hypothalamus there is pituitary gland. There are lots of nucleus present in the hypothalamus. One of such important nucleus is supraoptic nucleus. This nucleus synthesizes ADH which comes down to the pituitary gland. Here I would like to mention an important concept that ADH synthesize in hypothalamus and secrete from the posterior pituitary. So posterior pituitary doesn't produce ADH. It is just like a storehouse from where ADH secretes into the general circulation. Now ADH is antidiuretic hormone which means it doesn't allow diuresis or water loss. So it is water conserving hormone. Now what circumstances you need to conserve water? Well when your blood or extracellular water is hyperosmolar. Suppose you are walking alone in a desert without drinking water and food. So you are continuously losing water through sweating, perspiration and urination which will eventually make your blood and extracellular fluid hyperosmolar. So in this situation your blood need to conserve water. Here ADH comes into action. It helps the body to reabsorb water from the kidney. As we know normal osmolarity of the blood is 290 to 300 milliosmol per liter. So if your body is deprived of water and blood osmolarity goes up more and more ADH will secrete to keep the osmolarity around the normal value. Let's see how this whole system works. You must be knowing about osmoreceptors. Here this is hypothalamus and this is third ventricle. Anterolateral area of third ventricle having some osmoreceptors which can sense osmolarity of the blood. Two such specialized structures are subfornical organ and Organum vasculosum. This part of central nervous system doesn't have an intact blood brain barrier. So, blood or blood products can easily come in contact with the specialized structures so that they can sense the osmolarity of the blood and give signal to the hypothalamus for ADH secretion. Now, let's see how ADH works. Here, I would like to give you another important information. As you know, the other name of ADH is vasopressin because it can cause vasoconstriction. But to produce antidiuresis, small amount of ADH is enough. Whether for vasoconstriction, uh, it needs more amount of or larger amount of ADH. So in low concentration, it acts as an antidiuretic hormone and in high concentration, it acts as a vasoconstrictor. By the time a luminal fluid reaches to the distal part of the nephron, precisely late part of distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct area, it is highly diluted. The osmolarity around uh, 50 to 100 milliosmol per liter. Now, this is important to know that the water permeability of the last part of the nephron is ADH dependent. If ADH is not there, it will remain water impermeable. It means no water can resolve back to the general circulation so it will pass out as urine. Now let's see how ADH alter the cellular environment. Cells of this part of nephron have receptor for ADH. They are serpentine receptor or 7 pass receptor. ADH binds with this serpentine receptor which stimulate intercellular G protein and intercellular G protein stimulates adenyl cyclase which convert ATP into cyclic AMP. When intracellular cyclic AMP goes up it will phosphorylate protein kinase A. All these steps are nothing but to activate this enzyme. Now you can see there are some intracellular vesicles. Those vesicles are having some special protein channels which look like pores and water can pass through it. That's why those protein channels are called aquaporins. Now, protein kinase A phosphorylates those proteins and they get fused with the luminal membrane of the nephron. 
another important concept here you can see the collecting duct lumen so this side of the cell is luminous side and opposite side is basolateral side actually there are different types of aquaporin channels channels which are present on the basolateral side and luminal side are different only luminal side aquaporin channels are regulated by adh so in the presence of adh aquaporin channels are planted on the luminal side of the nephron so adh makes this portion water permeable now listen carefully the interstitial fluid here is hyperosmolar but the luminal fluid is hypoosmolar so the direction of the water will be from here to here which means water resorbed back to the interstitial fluid from luminal fluid in the presence of adh so if adh is present distal part of the nephron will be water permeable and you will pass concentrated urine but if adh is not there extra water will come out of your body as diluted urine now let's see how it works as a vasoconstrictor adh works on both renal epithelium and vascular smooth muscles however the receptors are different receptor present on the vascular smooth muscle is v1 receptor and receptor present on the renal epithelium is v2 receptor if v1 receptor is activated it can cause vasoconstriction of arterioles and increase total peripheral resistance the v2 receptors are involved in water reabsorption in the collecting ducts and maintenance of the body fluid osmolarity now you can see here it is a vascular smooth muscle cell and here it is v1 receptor v1 receptor is also called serpentine receptor or seven pass receptor as soon as adh binds with the v1 receptor it activates the g protein coupled receptor please remember this time it is gq but in case of renal epithelium it is gs or g stimulatory now activated gq receptor stimulates phospholipase c and phospholipase c breaks phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate into two parts one part is inositol triphosphate or ip3 and other is diacylglycerol or dag you know there are endoplasmic reticulum in the cytoplasm they have ip3 sensitive pumps when ip3 works on that pumps they release calcium from endoplasmic reticulum this calcium is responsible for smooth muscle contraction that is how adh acts as a vasoconstrictor v2 receptor is stimulated even in low concentration of adh but v1 receptor is stimulated only when high concentration of adh is present so it is worth remembering that's all guys if you have enjoyed this video please like comment and share and don't forget to subscribe thank you